Hi all, welcome to vSparks. In this video, we are going to discuss what is Google Cloud Platform and the introduction to Google Cloud Platform. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. These are the contents that we are going to discuss in this video. We are going to discuss what is cloud computing and its types, what is Google Cloud Platform, types of services offered by Google Cloud Platform. At last, we will be discussing the services of Google Cloud Platform one by one. What is cloud computing and its types? The practice of using a network of remote servers, storage, databases, networks, softwares hosted on the internet rather than on a local computer or server is called as cloud computing. We are going to pay for the cloud services that we are going to use. Cloud computing is often classified into three types that is public cloud, private cloud and hybrid cloud. Generally, when you own your own cloud it is called as private cloud. You own the physical servers, you own the virtual servers, you own the virtual cloud computing environment. So that comes under the category of public cloud. When you borrow someone's cloud as a service, it is called as public cloud. A cross mixture of these two is called as hybrid cloud. So these are the service providers or the vendors for the cloud computing types we have discussed. So Google Cloud comes under public cloud. Now we will discuss what is Google Cloud Platform. Google Cloud Platform is often referred to as GCP. Google Cloud Platform is a part of Google Cloud which includes many products and services like Gmail, Google Search, Google Maps, Google Photos, etc. etc. Actually, Google Cloud itself is a part of much larger ecosystem that consists of partners and providers. Many open source products are well supported by Google. So the takeaway of this slide is GCP is a cloud computing platform that is running inside Google Cloud. Types of services offered by GCP GCP is a computing solution platform that offers IAS that is Infrastructure as a Service, PaaS that is Platform as a Service and SaaS that is Software as a Service products. So these red lines that highlights that these items will be taken care by Google. The rest which is not highlighted should be taken care by you in all these models. So for example, in IAS service, if you are taking a virtual machine from the cloud, its hardware, servers, I mean the physical machines will be taken care by Google. You no, no need to worry for these physical machines. You have to take care of your operating systems and patching this operating system, upgradation of this operating system, middlewares, etc. along with the applications. Google will not be held responsible for these things in this model. Now let us explore the services of GCP. The first service is Compute Service. So under Compute Service, you got something called as Compute Engine that is the first product. Compute Engines will give you virtual machines in the cloud. You simply deploy a virtual machine in the cloud and you can access it. App engines or application engines will give you the provision to run your applications without any underlying infrastructure. There is no need for physical machines. You can simply deploy your code and run it in app engines. Google Kubernetes Engine, GKE On-Prem, Container Registry and Cloud Run are predominantly for running a containers. So these services will be used when you want to run container workloads. 
So the cloud functions or the event based trigger functions. This will run some codes automatically when it is triggered by cloud based events. Under networking, you can see the basic networking components like VPC, that is virtual private cloud, load balancers, router, routes, cloud VPN, firewalls, DNS, and NAT. So these are the things that is used to set up the networking in Google Cloud Platform. The partner interconnect and the dedicated interconnect is used to connect GCP without the use of internet. But these two services are a little bit expensive. So normally how you connect your Google Cloud Platform with the help of internet service provider. But when you use these services, there is no need for internet service providers. You can directly access Google Cloud Platform. To route the external traffic in and out of GCP, there is a service called as Traffic Director. Google categorizes this GCP networking performance into two tiers. They are Standard Network Tier and the Premium Network Tier. Under Storage and Databases, you can see Google Cloud Storage, which is an object storage system. Persistent disks will give you block level storage system for your virtual machines. Cloud File Store is a managed shared file storage system. For SQL based databases like MySQL and PostgreSQL, you have got Cloud SQL and Cloud Spanner. Cloud SQL supports vertical scaling, whereas the Cloud Spanner will support horizontal scaling. For NoSQL databases, we have Cloud Bigtable, Firestore, and Data Store. Cloud Memory Store is a fully managed in memory data store based on Redis. Here comes the quiz time. Please answer this quiz by clicking the icon which is present on your right top corner of your screen. And the question is, Google Kubernetes Engine is a product for running what? And the options are scripts, container, app codes. You can answer this question by clicking the right top corner icon. So under Identity and Access Management, we have Cloud IAM and Resource Manager where you manage your identities and permissions. Google Cloud KMS is a cloud hosted key management service that lets you to manage cryptographic keys for your cloud services. So ideally, it deals mostly with the encryption. Cloud Security Scanner is a web security scanner for common vulnerabilities in App Engine, Compute Engine and Google Kubernetes Engine applications. Cloud Security Command Center enables you to understand your security and data attack surface by providing asset inventory, discovery, search and management. This slide shows the big data products of Google Cloud Platform. BigQuery is a serverless data warehouse. Cloud Dataflow is an Apache Beam based ETL tool. Whereas your data prop is a managed Hadoop service which is used to run Hadoop jobs. Data Prep is an intelligent cloud data service used to visually explore clean and prepare your data for analysis and machine learning. Cloud Data Lab is a Jupyter Notebook based data exploration tool. So mostly the scientist, I mean the data scientist will be using this tool often. PubSub is a fully managed message broker service. Data Studio is a business intelligent tool like your Tableau. Cloud Genomics is used to process, analyze and annotate genomics and biomedical data at scale 
using containerized workflows. Cloud Data Fusion is a fully managed code-free integration service that helps users efficiently build and manage ETL data pipelines. When your expertise level in coding is not that much, you can use this Cloud Data Fusion to build your data pipelines. At last, Cloud Composer is a fully managed data workflow orchestration services. GCP offers artificial intelligence and machine learning products as well with of greater flexibility. If you want to build your own model, you can go for AI platform engine or otherwise, you can choose any of the other pre-built models like Vision API, Speech API, Natural Language API, Translation API, etc. etc. You can see the bottom of this slide. So everything will be annotated with auto. Using this auto ML product, you can train high quality custom machine learning models with minimal efforts and machine learning expertise. Under tools, we can see stack driver monitoring, logging, error reporting, tracing and debugging tools. Whereas your deployment manager is an infrastructure orchestration and deployment tool. Similarly, you can see other helper tools as well here. That's it. Here is the summary that we have discussed so far in the last few minutes. Thank you from these parts. Thank you for watching.